Okay, got the windows uh, well protected. So some blinds on there. Um, so the walls we're going to try and take down, but I don't think it will come down in one piece. And this is the first time I've done for years um, off a of decking. I've got how nice it was to. Uh, To have, uh, to have it. This is roughly a 10 foot, 11 foot ceiling in here. First lot of, um, first lot of uh, scaffold boards, uh, or trestles were too small. So they had to go back this morning, but they brought them straight back, so that was good. Well done, first hire for that. This ceiling today is getting ripped down. This is going to be levelled out by a carpenter. Uh, then it's going to have uh, sound insulation put back in because there's a conversion upstairs. And then it'll be uh, overboarded by yours truly and skinned by yours truly. Okay guys, I've had a bit of a problem with me van, so I am um, in this lovely Hertz renter, renter van. It's a lovely old transit, oh, runs like a dream. It's got six gears, air conditioning, um, just brought loads of boards over to this uh, ceiling job. And uh, yeah, it's a bit of a pleasure to drive. Uh, it's difficult to get into if you don't know how. <laughs> but um, yeah, so uh, I'm just on my way to take this back. The mechanics working on mine, and uh, yeah, I'll see you in a second. Back on this job. Why 
you never want eight by fours. To give you a bit of an idea, that's running from the centre. That wedge that the uh, carpenters had to put in. This is on both from both ends of the ceiling to bring the ceiling level. Absolutely crazy, but he's done a great job. Okay, guys. First things first. Make sure you've got a belt on that's got the drill in it drill, your screwdriver, your screws, your tape measure, your pencil and your knife um, because if you just got them on the floor somewhere or on a bench and you have to keep going over and picking bits up um, it takes so much longer. If you've got the tool belt on you can literally get in there for your screws, get in there for the drill, the screwdriver and uh, you can crack on. With that in mind, put some glasses on. Right. Gonna measure what I've got going on up here. Okay, so spanning the joist is six by three foot with twelve and a half mil bolts. Across here we've got sixty-seven and a quarter. Well, I do it. I don't hold the tape and score it because I'm rubbish at that. I use a good old fashioned pencil. things back in your belt because I wear a belt and I still put things on the floor. <laughs> in these boards now it does make them stronger it does make them more difficult to snap back in the belt okay I've got new props on this in place so they're ready for grabbing what's the new board up there
place. Get your old screws in. I should have done. Let's mark these first ones. Mark them on the wall because I'm uh, just too easy to miss. Okay, if you have a smoke alarm that might be fixed into the mains, you don't really want to be messing about with this. If it's near the end of a board or the edge of a board or a joist, then once you cut out your board, you can mark this groove where the wire will be. So you cut that piece out you then slot the board up sideways into this area. So I'm coming from the back with the board and I'm sliding it in that way. And then the slot will make the gap for the wires and then the piece you've cut out because there'll be a gap here and then you just put that piece back in up to the wire and you're filled in doesn't work so well if this was to be right in the middle of a board but because it's right near the edge of a board as you can see here where I've marked it that's where the edge of the actual board is so you only have to cut a, a little four inch groove to take the wire in the hole, it's chopping off that excess. There you have it. Fair room.
probably one of the flattest ceilings I've skimmed in a long time because ceilings generally are never flat and level unless they're concrete ones. Not even then. Mm.
1200 spring skin, second coat. Uh, not over this last part. Thank you. 